Hello everyone and welcome to Bevan's Builds. And in today's video, we're gonna be discussing how to hook up a GFCI outlet. Now, before we get started, let's start with some of the materials, tools, we're gonna to be needing to do this. First, get yourself a brand new GFCI. And we're gonna discuss this a lot more here in just a minute. The next thing, you just wanna get yourself a simple little screwdriver, preferably flathead, but you can also have a Phillips handy as well because sometimes the screws on these do have a Phillips head on them. The next thing I'm gonna suggest is this is a tick tracer. And these are extremely handy and they are extremely cheap. So if you don't want to spend the money to get an actual fluke multimeter, this is your next best tool. Now let's go ahead and jump in and let's get started. Okay, now the first thing I want to say is you should always call a professional to have someone do any of this work first, especially with it being electrical. Now with that being out of the way, I want to start digging in and tell you some of the things you can do. But again, I am not responsible if you get hurt or use your equipment incorrectly, as this is just an informational video to give you some ideas. Now the first thing I want to say is anytime you're going to work on electrical equipment, you should always test the equipment that you're going to be using to test electricity to make sure it works on a positive, valid supply source. So with that being said, I like to use an outlet that I already know is in good working order. <clears throat> and what I do is I take my meter, I put it on, and just for those of you that have never had a multimeter before, they have these little pieces on the back here and it's to give you basically an extra set of hands. But anyway, put it on the V for volts if you're gonna use this type of meter. And then you're gonna take this and come over here and something else I wanna point out is you have two prongs, two holes, when you are looking at a standard outlet. The small one is always gonna be your hot and the larger of the two holes is always gonna be your neutral. So we take our red, which is supposed to be for our hot, and we put it in the hole and then we take our black and put it in the hole. And then now, as you can see here, or at least I hope you can see, we have 123 volts. Now we tested our multimeter. Now let's test our little tick tracer. And this is also made by Fluke for those of you that are interested. And I will be putting links in the description below for both of these meters. Now, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna push and hold it until it comes on and you hear it beep. And as you can hear, you can smack it also and you can see where it'll light up. But anyway, what we're gonna do, again, this should be your hot, and this is only looking for power. So you shove that in the hole, and it lights up. So we know that this is working. Now, this is the outlet I decided to use as my example point, as it is the easiest one to access in my room. So the first thing I like to do, um, I'm gonna show you a little trick. If you don't know where the outlet is fed from, Generally, pretty much anybody's house, as long as you have all the background noise filtered and shut off, you will be able to hear this as you walk through your house. But anyway, that's one another nice thing about this little tick tracer is when they designed it, the head of this is actually thin enough that you can push it in and it will hold it. So what you do is you push it in and hold it in there or, and it'll hold it in there. And then you go turn off your breaker until you hear the sound stop. So let's start by doing that. Now that we've done that, we are gonna go and turn the power off. Now my panel's a little bit away from here, so it took me a minute to get back, but anyway, now you can tell that it is off using your tick tracer, and you push and hold it until you hear the beep, and this turns off. But another good way to test it, as we did already test our fluke meter, and it is working, is now that we will take it just in case and check and put our meter in there and again as you can see no voltage now because i'm impatient and i love my dewalt tools i'm using my dewalt gun to pull the outlet out because i hate screwing with an actual screwdriver <laughs> here's the most important part of the video once you get your outlet out you separate because you'll have at least two uh, Romex cables inside of there, and you wanna separate the hots and the neutral, and then you wanna put a wire nut on the, each one of these, so that way there's no fear of getting poked, and my wire nut popped loose on me. Mind you, this is still turned off, <clears throat> but there's a reason that I'm, and this isn't wanting to cooperate, there we go, and there's a reason that I'm bringing this up and showing you this, because when you go to hook up a GFCI outlet, uh, a lot of people make a very common mistake, and that's why I wanted to make this video. 
when you get the outlet and you take it out of the box, you're gonna see this little yellow sticker is on the back of your GFCI outlet. And there is an actually very important reason for this. And what that reason is, is because as you can see right here, and I'm hoping I can make it visible anyway, you see where it says line. So this two wires or these two screws are your line side. And what it is, is if you look real carefully, it says load, but the bottom two that have the tape on it are your load. So what that means by saying line and load, line is the power wires that come in to your GFCI and load is the rest of the wires that are going to be going on and continuing through to the next outlet. So now here is how we test for that. Again, making sure that the neutrals and the hots are separated. You can leave the ground continuous because you're going to be hooking that ground wire to your GFCI anyway. But what I like to do is I put the wire nuts on all the wires so that way there is no fear of anybody getting shocked or poked. And then I will come back with my tick tracer. And now this is how we find out which set of wires is our line, which is the wires that are gonna come in. And again, the wires that do not have the tape on them are our line wires, it's our feed wires. So I already went and turned the breaker on. I'm gonna take my tick tracer, I'm gonna turn it on, and there we go. That black is dead, that black is hot. So now, knowing that this wire is the hot wire, we know that this pair of wires goes in here. The black goes on the brass or silver, or I'm sorry, the brass or gold colored screw. The neutral goes on the silver colored screw. And then the same thing applies with the load. You take your tape off the back side of this, you put the black again on the brass or gold color, and then you put the white on the silver. Now before getting started, I went and turned the power back off and I'm just going to check myself again. Yes, it is dead. So now we are good to go ahead and work on this. So now we're gonna take all of our wire nuts off and again, we are just simply, now something else I want to point out, a lot of people will hook the uh, wire to the outside of the actual outlet. Me personally, if you look inside of here, and it's probably really hard to see on camera, there is a paddle that's in there when you tighten up that screw and it'll tighten up that wire. And that is how I prefer to wire my GFIs. So again, this being the line, this one goes in here, this one goes in here. We're gonna tighten these guys up and then we're gonna pull this piece of tape off. Something else I do wanna point out, I got all the wires hooked up. The ground works the same way as the rest. You just push it in through the back and tighten it up as well. Because I don't actually want a GFCI in this particular location, I am just doing this as an example video. I am not gonna be stuffing it in the wall, but I do wanna show you the power is now on. So there we got our line sides got hot and our top is dead. And the reason the top is dead because once you do an outlet, you have to hit the reset. So let's hit the reset. This particular outlet, we have the little indicator light that lights up to let us know that it's working. And as you can see, we have power now to the outlet. So we are good to push that in and we are good to roll. And now anyway, that is all for this video and I hope this was informative and helpful and helps you with your projects at home to let you know how to change a GFCI outlet. Also, just a reminder, I will be putting links in the description below for both of these tools as they are my favorite tool to use, Fluke, but Greenly does also make them and I will put some links in there as well. And there are numerous other places that make them as well, but I've always had the most luck with Fluke and Greenly. Uh, also, if you need to know how to wire up a standard outlet, I'll be putting a link in this video for you to find that as well. Now, as always, thank you for coming to Bevan's Builds. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and hit the bell and all that good stuff down below as it will give you notifications for all the content that I post on my channel. And we will see you next time on Bevan's Builds.